Okay, it's one o'clock here, which is 10 UTC. Um, thank you everyone for joining. I don't know if you can see my face, but I'm Pukraj Ranjan. I work as the head of community here at 100, um, and I'm very excited to have all of you on board. Um, before we start, and we're still waiting for some more people to join, what I would love for everyone to do um, is to go to the participants uh, button in the toolbar at the bottom of your screen, at the bottom of the Zoom panel. Um, find your name, it should be generally on the top, and rename yourself. So put your first name, if you wanna put your full, full name, of course you can, um, but we would want to see also your organization name as well as country name. Um, it will just give us a good sense of where people are joining us. Um, I already see people from Finland, Thailand, Qatar, um, Germany, US, but I would love to kind of know who else is here. So if you could rename yourself, it's easier on the laptop than on the phone. Um, but if you go to the toolbar, find your name, rename yourself, and change it, add your organization and country name in it. Um, Vishal, I see you putting it on the chat, but maybe go to the participants button, find your name and re uh, rename yourself. So it would be interesting if everyone can do that while we wait for more people to join. Yes, Vishal has changed, dream a dream from India. Luisa, if you could rename yourself. We have someone from Lithuania. New Zealand. Sweden, Pakistan, Romania. India. Nice. Um, Mariah, would you be able to ch put the instructions in the chat box as well, um, just for people who might be joining us a little late, but we'll get started. Um, I would love to introduce Khatija, who is uh, a researcher and education specialist here at 100, and she would be sharing a little bit about what we've been doing given the COVID um, like situation as well as our response from our end. So Khatija, feel free to take over. Okay, awesome. Well, hello everyone. So happy to see you all here today and that you were able to join. So as Pukraj mentioned, I'm Khatija. I work as a researcher at 100 and we have been extremely excited about hosting this workshop to really hear from you and gain some more insight on the challenges that you're facing and the solutions that you've come up with. So today the workshop will be divided in two. We'll just go through the agenda quickly. Perfect, so just a bit of a welcome we'll start with. Then we have three innovators who will be sharing. We'll then go into a breakout discussion, then go on to group sharing and end with next steps. And we would really love if everyone was able to stay for the entirety of the workshop because we really just wanna hear from you. So to begin, I'll start with just a brief overview of our 100 Spotlight on COVID-19 in collaboration with the OECD, and just a little bit about what we've done and where we're going. So we launched this Spotlight around four weeks ago, knowing that this was not gonna be a traditional Spotlight. They usually are completed in a year, and this one we managed to complete in 12 days. So with that being said, we do recognize that inspiring solutions and practices are being shared every day and that there are a variety of contexts to address. We view this spotlight as ongoing and hope to include more solutions as we gain more insights. Mariah is going to be posting some key resources in the chat that you can check out there. Perfect. As well as upcoming webinars that you may be interested in. We'll also be sending these resources and this recording in our post-call email, so do not worry if you miss something. It will all be there and delivered to you. We're now hosting our third webinar pertaining to the spotlight, spotlight on COVID-19, and I'll just go through kind of what the first two were and what this one's gonna be mainly focusing on. 
So the first, we presented our findings and the selected practices for the spotlight. The second was an interview between Saku, our creative director, and Andrea Sleiker, the director for the Dictorate of Education and Skills. They discussed how countries are handling this educational change on a global scale and what they foresee as the future of education. We do have two more webinars coming up and you can also find the link to register in the chat that Mariah has posted. So now moving on to this webinar, one of the key areas that we are continuing to look into is reaching children and students in remote and marginalized communities. We have a report of great solutions, but mostly online initiatives. And the reasoning behind this webinar is to better understand what the reality looks like where there is less or no connectivity to the internet, technology and resources are scarce. So I really look forward to having this conversation with you and hearing more about the challenges and solutions that are happening in the context where you work. I'm really excited now to be able to start the conversation and we will hear from three speakers from our innovator community to share how they've been coping. We'll hear from Speed School in, based in Ethiopia, Broadclass in Pakistan and Coast School in Colombia. So Caitlin, I'll invite you to share your screen now while I briefly introduce you and Speed School. Share, I'm just looking for the share screen, but there we go. Got it. Perfect. So Caitlin Barron is the inaugural CEO of the Luminous Fund, a ph philanthropic NGO dedicated to advancing education innovation for the world's most vulnerable children. Luminous has enabled 132,611 children to have a second chance at an education. Luminous believes in the power of creative pedagogies and activity-based education to transform children's lives even in the poorest corners of the world. Caitlin has spent the previous decade as a senior leader with the Michael and Susan Dell Foundation, helping to grow the organization to steward over one billion in charitable giving. She founded and led the foundation's office in South Africa and built MSDF's impact investing portfolio. She's graduated from UCLA in political science and is pursuing an executive master's with the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy at Tufts University. The Luminous Fund Speed School Initiative is an accelerated learning program for out of school children, also known as Second Chance, and has been honored by 100 for three consecutive years. So I'll let Caitlin take it from here. Well, Khadija, thank you so much for that kind introduction. Everyone knows far more about me now than I expected. So <laughs> that was very generous. Um, it's really wonderful to be uh, here together um, with everyone today. And I know there are a number of folks on the call who, just like Luminos, are focused on reaching the hardest to reach children. And obviously, our job has both never been more important and, and also never been more challenging. And so I'm really looking forward to the conversation today to um, really dive into the current challenges before us and exchange ideas and advice. Um, I have, uh, I'll take us very quickly through just a little bit of background on Luminos and our work to help orient the conversation and really look forward to getting into the broader discussion. So, I, you know, as we all know on the call, even before uh, the advent of the coronavirus uh, crisis, a quarter of a billion children around the world were denied the chance to go to school, um, generally because of poverty, also because of, of conflict and refugee status. And, and it's really those children who are Luminos's uh, main focus and, and key priority. Um, and as Khadija would have shared, um, we focus on the children who have been left behind by the schooling system. And we believe that by taking a bottoms up community led approach, we can use all the same rich learning techniques that we know from classrooms in Europe and the United States are best for, for young children learning. And we can bring them to life in a very low resource setting beyond the reach of a cell phone, um, beyond uh, basic electricity connectivity that by empowering uh, young people to, to serve as teachers and to work with their community and work with the resources all around them, we can deliver rich education in the poorest corners of the world. 
very quickly, um, our core program um, that was awarded the 100 award uh, for our work in Ethiopia, where we operate the program under the name Speed School, um, is a 10 month program for children who are 10 or 11 years old and have never been to school. And essentially in one school year, we cover the first three grades of school curriculum. And we do that, um, we like to say, by combining some elements of method and some elements of magic. So some of it is just that we have long school days, long school weeks. We have four times as many hours teaching basic literacy as you would find in a typical Ethiopian classroom. So some of it is just literally smaller classes and longer days. But we believe what really makes the difference is the magic element of our work, which is that we train teachers to teach in what we call a five senses learning method. So that the information presented to children in the classroom is presented not as something coming from outside their community, but something indigenous and organic to their life to that point. So even though our students are first generation readers, often the very first in their family to learn to read, they're learning to read with stories that are written about children who look and sound just like them and live in communities that look just like theirs. And in that way, we're able to present learning, which is fundamentally new to children, but presenting it in a, in a way that's familiar. We all know why this work is so important. and We all know our reach. Basic orientation on Luminous, our work began in Ethiopia. That's the program that the 100 team has so generously featured. We have since expanded to Liberia and West Africa and in Lebanon. And continue to push really hard on literacy and have seen long-term results. Um, I'll, in particular here, a recent study of our Ethiopia program showed that children who graduate from our program have twice as high a chance of ultimately completing primary school. And I think the key lesson that we take from this work is actually right here which is that we all know today there are over 1.5 billion children around the world who are missing out in school. And from the wealthiest child to the least well-resourced, all of them will face a learning deficit on return to school. I think one of the most powerful lessons that comes from the Luminous experience is the realization that it is possible in even a relatively short period of time to help children dramatically catch back up to grade level and pick up where they left off. And so we're excited about the opportunity to leverage what we've learned about how to do intensive rapid delivery back to school programming and see the extent to which our program and our experience can be generalized across um, education systems. And that's the conversation I look forward to having with all of you today. Wonderful, thank you so much, Caitlin, for sharing. And I will do my best to unshare now. It's always, yeah. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Thank you so much. So we'll now move on to Fakira and I'll let you um, share your screen while I just briefly introduce you and broad class. So Fakira Najib is the chief executive at Power 99 Foundation and sharing today broad class listen to learn interactive radio instruction program, which originates in Pakistan. So Broadclass delivers student-centered instruction that covers basic skills in universal cross-cutting themes and general and universal principles for early childhood education that makes it relevant to other cultural and geographical scenarios, quantitative and qualitative information on participant achievement attest to the success of IRI. Broadclass has recently launched Marahi Karo Na, a distance learning initiative that is using radio for children to ensure continuity of educational processes at home during the coronavirus pandemic. So Fakira, I'll let you take it from here. Thank you so much. And it's really good to see you all and to see a group of people that how concerned they are about the children across the world. So I'm, I'm privileged to be part of this team. Um, Broad class listen to learn, uh, we initiated program for high corona, which means let's learn. And we are using radio, so it's interactive radio instruction to improve quality, equity, and inclusiveness in the education. As you all know that COVID-19 affected children across the uh, world, but in Pakistan, 46.8 million children are out of school right now because of the lockdown. 
and data, UNESCO data shows that 8.6 million of them are enrolled at pre-primary, 22.9 million at primary, 1.88 million at tertiary level, and 13.36 at secondary school level. So the, the whole make 46.8 million children. And this phase of crisis might have an immediate impact on children, especially their losses in learning and increased dropout. Because currently we are in a state that our 2.5 million children are out of school 5 to 15 years, which was already a huge challenge for us. And in this situation, we can see that what will be the dropout. And because we were struggling to uh, take that, that children in the school, and in the same time, all children are out of school. So the challenge is high, and we have to see that what will happen after this lockdown and those things. In Pakistan, different steps are taken for online and distance education, but unfortunately, there are certain challenges which I want to share with you. First of all, accessibility. Children are facing problem of accessibility because the school closure has widened the equity gap. Many children do not have access to digital devices or internet connectivity at home. Even in far-flung rural areas, they don't have electricity, which is must for the, using these gadgets or for the connectivity. The second challenge we are facing is affordability. In Pakistan, more than 30% people living below poverty line, and it is very difficult for low-income groups to pay cost for internet. They cannot purchase equipment and get training to use them. So this is another challenge. Another is poor technology literacy because our illiteracy rate is very high. And we don't have poor uh, uh, technology literacy, and this is another issue which is right now at this moment. If we go to this uh, digital or online, the problem we are facing. Other is connectivity. Though we have 4G internet, uh, but the upload is less than one megabyte per second. So you can see that how difficult it is to give uninterrupted, continuous uh, source of information to the children who either have. Uh, uh, access to the internet or they oh, can afford even they cannot have so you can see there is a major shift of have and have not of technology in in the current situ situation especially in pakistan another challenge which we are facing when we are planning those these things right now is teachers institution capacity and preparedness unfortunately the institutions and teachers they lack expertise in integration of digital tools in the curriculum because we never thought about these things before Online teaching resources are not available. Education institutions do not have expertise to develop content for online teaching. Especially, I'm talking about the mainstream schools or institutions, where majority of our students who cannot afford private school institution system, they are in that system. And uh, especially social distancing, I want to discuss, because it, it, as compared to the developed country, we are a developing country. So we believe we are not at the social distance, we are at the physical distance. Because in developed countries, they have some kind of connectivity through internet, clouds, and there are different medium of connectivity. In Pakistan, in the Pakistani context, we believe we are in the physical uh, distance because uh, our social connectivity platforms are mosques, schools, gatherings, and all those things, and they are all locked. So we, are, we believe that the social distance term is not relevant and it's a biased term if we use for the developing countries, or especially in context of Pakistan. So keeping in mind all those things, as we were already working with the uh, radio and using interactive radio instruction program, broad class lesson to learn, and we are currently working with more than 200,000 children across Pakistan, both in public schools, non-public, uh, non-formal schools, even in madaris, and we have a complete program design. So in the current context, radio, we believe that is the best medium to reach children not only in the far flank even in the um, uh, in the cities also because of its connectivity it doesn't need any connectivity it's free for the end user so they can afford it and the third thing is that the standardized content across the board is same so you don't compromise even on the quality of the content so we designed prior for high corona which means let's learn it's an emergency assistance intervention this would be a stop gap solution for equal and quality learning for the young children. We believe that when classes resume, these radio educational packages will help, help students learn enough so they are ready for the next. So the same uh, instruction material which they are receiving in the school, we use it through sound pedagogy and delivering it through radio. So it's the same lesson and, and they're, they're aligned with their lesson curriculum. So it will help them to be, to, to, to when they go back to their classes, 
So the goal of the program is to provide uninterrupted quality education to students during the school school year. And the objectives are to develop the foundation of an education in emergency program. And one component of the program is on tip of the day, in which we included increased awareness on coronavirus. Because when we work with the children, we see that there are a lot of public service messages through different mediums. But uh, most of them are not age appropriate. As we are working with 5 to 15 years age, uh, children, so we develop uh, uh, um, messages in a very simple and um, in their own uh, simple words with the, in their own languages. So for different communities, as we are using radio from different districts, so for every district we are using their uh, regional language as a tool to deliver the message. So children are aware of all those things and they can learn something about that. This is the program we have daily, we have already started this program and daily 30 minutes lesson that address specific learning objectives that are aligned with their national curriculum and is composed of series of activities, including poems, games, which are delivered by a constant set of radio characters, including radio teacher and radio students who model instruction and activities and then it's a, it's a, you can say it's learning by doing a fun activity where children, a single child in, in isolation in their home with these radio characters, they daily receive this lesson and they learn some uh, specific themes daily. Uh, this is about the opportunity. We feel that this will help us to come together across boundaries. It is an opportunity for the education sector to, to unite, forge connections across countries and continents and truly share what work is what works in a global way and we don't think that prior to this council we were able to do this and we'll have missed a big opportunity if we don't try to do that because in the context of pakistan in 2005 there were major earthquake where thousands of children were displaced and schools were closed and then we have in 2009 and 10 there were floods where we see a lot of um, disaster and then we also have one uh, were fighting on war and terror where the majority of these children were and during all those periods, we didn't learn to on the uh, um, early preparedness. So this time we, we think that this is a time not for us, for all like across the globe, for our countries, that we must have something for early preparedness. Instead of when there is a, some disaster, we sit and then we think that what we, what's next. So there is a need for early preparedness, especially for the education. There must be some uh, solutions, some programs uh, and everything ready to just get started. And we, uh, in, at Power 99, we are working on those lines. Thank you so much. Lovely, thank you so much for sharing really powerful solutions. And we'll move on to our third presenter, Paola Franco, and I'll invite you now to share your screen while I briefly introduce CoSchool. So Paola Franco is the partnership Director for CoSchool, a B Corp founded in 2014 by English and Colombian teachers that are part of the Teach for All network. They have developed innovative programs to tackle the skills gap facing Colombian youth growing up in a post conflict era, such as co led programs for students and co trained teacher training. In 2019, they received funds from Gates and Templeton Foundation to scale up and measure their work. So, Paula, I'll let you take it from here. Thank you, Katija. Thank you, everyone, for having me in this in this place and to share um, our project. And okay, Co School uh, works in Colombia, um, develop uh, social and emotional uh, skills with teachers and students in rural areas and urban areas. And in these times, we work in uh, facing um, the several challenge. Um, principal, uh, how to um, teach emotions in virtuality. So um, I want to present how to teach and how to share emotions in virtuality. And I want to, um, to start um, to present the, 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 the principal challenge that we have right now um, in Colombia. 
Um, I know that we have another challenge, uh, another, another challenge that um, we have facing that we, we have a, a, another challenge that to access uh, to connectivity. Um, but we have a principal challenge, how to, we can help the education, educational system to teach from a distance with the heart and support teachers to maintain relationships of trust uh, with their students in this new learning process. How um, the virtual learning, how we, we can virtual learning with the heart, how we can this education system, system work in a country that educates through emotional relationships. This is our principal challenge that we have in this country. And um, I, we can share with you the best practice that we are uh, implementing right now uh, from CoSchool and another um, projects here in Colombia. And one of them uh, is to strengthen the connection virtuality um, to help teachers with their students uh, to perform in spaces um, with, with their students is an, um, an, um, an emotional, uh, one, of be, one of the best practices, the making a check-in with the students um, as an emotional check-in, as a mood um, to, to the space uh, between teachers and students to can share how they feel and uh, they can share what emotions they feel before, uh, before the start the, the classes and they can share with pairs. Uh, and it, this practice that works and, and a lot, and you need teachers and students as a way um, and strengthen the bonds between teachers and students. And they can share how it feels before start the classes. It's one of the best practice to, to strengthen the, the bonds uh, and the connections in virtuality. The second best practice that we can, uh, we were implementing uh, in virtuality uh, are is, um, and as is, is spaces of gratitude. Virtual gratitude helps to us um, as an intentional time, which seeks to generate a, a specific routine, um, we seek uh, as, a, as a safe place, uh, pressure-free, uh, with the, which, um, in which teachers and students can think for good things that have happened uh, to them during they, their days. So we can we can say thank you uh, with our students and our teachers, and this safe place um, it's uh, it's converting right now uh, and special practice uh, and a special routine um, that we can share uh, in in several in several spaces. It's um, an it's an a best practice that helped to strengthen the connection between people from virtuality. And uh, right now, CoSchool, um, and finally, uh, CoSchool, um, we're working with the government and, especially, and specifically uh, with the National Education Ministry, creating a, pl a specific platform um, with social and emotional learning products um, online and offline, with online and offline products for teachers and students 
um, to make a viable product um, and to make a viable product uh, and in different communication channels as um, such radio and televisions in order to reach the largest possible population in the country because we are facing of um, a specific challenge to accessibility uh, to access to connectivity and we know uh, the only channel is not internet to um, to access our our students and right now uh, we are exploring uh, different channels uh, to uh, to to reach um, different populations in 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 our country. So we are working together with the government and um, making available our uh, principal product and principal uh, course uh, for teachers uh, called uh, Edumocion. Edumocion is our first. Um, virtual uh, course available for teachers um, in Colombia um, in order to um, develop social and emotional skills for them and we are making available in different in different channels and right now we're working together with the government for uh, making it possible so thank you very much for your time Thank you, everyone. Uh, Caitlin, Fakira, Paula. Um, one thing that stood out to me just hearing all these different narratives is uh, the focus on, you know, what the current reality is, what the truth of um, for each one of us is, as well as there's so much hope, there's so much opportunity. And I know I see a lot of innovators on this call, a lot of community members, and um, there is huge scope, as uh, I think Fakira said, Caitlin said, um, there's huge scope for global collaboration as well.